This video is going to be a deep dive into the iPad Air 4th Gen, also known as the 2020 iPad Air. I'll be covering all aspects of this iPad while showing you how it might fit into your life. I've made it easier for you to navigate through the video by using the chapters, which you can find right next to the timestamp, so that you can get right to the part that you want to watch. Also, you can find all related links in the description down below this video and subscribe to the R3D2 channel for tech videos that you wouldn't want to miss. With that out of the way, let's go. You might wonder if this iPad will fit your usage and purpose. This iPad was targeted at casual users with moderate workloads who make up for the large majority of the iPad's user base. For a student or in a work from home setup, you could use this to access your documents, attend calls, or even use it as your note taking machine. The upgraded 7 megapixel front facing camera supports full HD video, so all those zoom calls will look much better through the eyes of this iPad. The faster Wi Fi, courtesy of the new and improved Wi Fi 6 and simultaneous dual band technologies, significantly improve the experience of this iPad when you're using it on the go. However, working for a long stretch on the iPad alone might be a challenge. That's from its battery life, which could have been a bit better in my opinion. I managed to get around 4.5 hours of screen on time with just YouTube, which would translate barely to a busy day at school or work with video calls and note taking. It's also perfect for graphic designers and photographers who are either just starting off with the craft or just need a hardware upgrade. The overall quality of the screen, its brightness and the vividly natural colors it produces makes it the perfect display to edit photos and graphics on. The second gen Apple Pencil fits the purpose flawlessly and apps that make full use of it like Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo and Procreate are just getting better with each update. Adobe is working hard on breakthrough changes to their creative apps on the iPad too. Plus, there are a few free options outside of Creative Cloud that they provide for beginners. And I found that editing photos on the iPad is much more intuitive than on a computer due to the versatility of the pencil. The compromise for this ease of use is the lack of slightly more advanced options and tools that you might have incorporated into your workflow. So make sure you check for the availability of the tools that you use on the iPad before getting it solely for that purpose. For everyone with a thing for making music, this iPad's a great starting point too. The USB-C port on the bottom allows you to connect a supported audio interface to jam out or even hook up a MIDI controller all on the go. It's got a set of four speakers that output stereo audio, which definitely sounded much better than I expected them to. There's multiple apps that will get you started with music creation, but none of them are as powerful as a full-fledged DAW like Ableton Live or Logic Pro. Editing videos on this thing is a breeze too. The A14 Bionic chip inside supports videos up to 4K and it is surely much faster than any other device in the same price range. But again, it's only limited by the tools that are available. The cameras on the iPad have never been as important as they currently are. With video calls becoming mainstream, the upgrade to the cameras here was very imminent. The front-facing camera on this one has a 7 megapixel sensor that produces much clearer images and can also shoot video at full HD. The dynamic range of this camera is enhanced with Smart HDR3, but unfortunately there is no support for Animojis or Memojis due to the absence of Face ID. The main camera on this one is the same as the main camera on the iPad Pro with M1, and it features a 12 megapixel sensor that can record videos up to 4K and can also do full HD slow mo. Both these cameras work exceptionally well for video calls and they produce a much better looking image than most of the tablets or even laptops for that matter in the same price range. This iPad, bearing the footprint of the Pro series, has the three little connectors for the accessories on the back. So it's compatible with the Magic Keyboard and all other keyboard folio cases that you can find. It's also compatible with the second gen Apple Pencil and has the magnetic charger on the right edge too. But since I wasn't planning on using this extensively, I skipped on the Magic Keyboard and got the regular folio case instead. This one's the Cypress green color. It's a bummer that they don't make leather folio cases for this one. I've always loved Apple's leather cases for their durability and rugged nature. But this folio has a soft touch silicone exterior and a microfiber lined interior. It satisfyingly snaps onto the back of the iPad magnetically and it's secure enough to keep it in place, but it is relatively easy to pull apart. I would have liked it better if it gave a bit more protection and if the sides were covered. One area where Apple hasn't skimmed on this is on the charger, which is included in the box alongside the iPad. And in fact, it's a 20 watt fast charger. It's got a USB-C port that juices up the iPad from 0 to 100 in two and a half hours. Apple's official iPad lineup right now is vastly considerate in terms of pricing and power. 
It goes from the least expensive 8th gen iPad all the way to the insane 2TB iPad Pro with M1. There's older iPads which are very powerful being sold by other third parties that are still worth a consideration when you choose your iPad. So basically there's an iPad for everyone. But the one that would stand out the most in this whole lineup would be this iPad Air. That's from all of the tricks that it's got up its sleeve for its price. It also comes at a time when Android tablet manufacturers are trying their best to compete with it alongside Microsoft Surface laptops. Though these Android and Windows tablets or two-in-ones have matured to become more useful over the years and maybe in a few cases better than the iPad, Apple still continues to retain the largest market share in the world of tablets. This has been reinforced by the iPad OS updates that Apple's been pushing to make the iPad function more like a laptop. Though it is possible to fully replace a laptop with an iPad, it's still got a lot of room for improvement. In comparison to the M1 iPad Pro, this one lacks the improved brighter and crispier display with extended dynamic range, along with ProMotion support for the 120Hz refresh rate. It's also missing out on the ultra-wide camera, the LiDAR sensor, Face ID, and the 12 megapixel front-facing camera, along with Thunderbolt integration. Even though this looks like a lot of missing things, for a casual user, it's something that wouldn't make a huge difference in my opinion. The price of the iPad Air would be its greatest advantage and something that would be a deal breaker for most. It also weighs much lesser than the iPad Pro and comes in five different colors. In terms of performance, the iPad Air doesn't feel slow in any aspect. The processing power is quite sufficient for all applications that I can see being used daily. Gaming on this iPad, if you were wondering, feels snappy too. But I still miss the 120Hz ProMotion display which would have been a great addition to this iPad. Personally, I upgraded to this iPad from the 10.5 inch iPad Pro which was released in 2017 and something that I still continue to use even today. This upgrade sure was a big thing for me, not just in terms of the performance, but also the design and the whole experience. The second generation pencil is a delight to use with its tap button. And I've gotten used to it to a point where I start tapping on even the first generation Apple Pencil and it does nothing. Besides that, it's also got a slightly larger screen than my older iPad Pro. But for me, the most noticeable changes with this iPad Air were its lighter weight and the lack of the ProMotion 120Hz display. I also had the 2018 iPad Pro around, but it was something that I didn't use that much. The iPad Air is just this iPad with a few tweaks to cut on costs and make it, well, more future-proof. It wouldn't be a big jump if you are upgrading from this iPad to the 2020 iPad Air given that it looks and feels exactly the same, except for the colors. Rather, in terms of the raw experience, I would rate the iPad Air slightly lower than the 2018 iPad Pro. And that's purely from the lack of the 120Hz ProMotion display which is something that will be felt. The iPad Air comes in 5 subtle colors. Sky blue was my personal choice and it's the one that I've got in this video. It looks more like a grey iPad with a blue hue rather than a more saturated blue like on this iPod Nano. I was a bit disappointed at first because the color looked to be much deeper on their website and ad material, but now that I've used it for a few days, it seemed to have grown on me. And now I feel that for the larger size of this iPad, this less saturated color fits more perfectly than a deeper more saturated blue. They give you just two storage options on this, which is a bummer. I feel that a 128GB base version or even an upgradable option with 128GB would have been appreciated by many. I did settle for the 64GB option and right out of the box I have around 54GB with all of Apple's built-in apps that can be deleted. This one's a part of Apple's educational discount for students too, which takes 10% off the retail price. They also have a few limited time offers to go with that. And currently, at the time of recording this video, they are offering a pair of AirPods completely free, which can also be upgraded to AirPods with wireless charging case or an AirPods Pro with an additional amount. Overall, this iPad Air will undeniably give you the best value for its price. And since it's an Apple product, it's not very often that I get to say that. So make sure you let me know what you think about this one in the comments below. And if you would also replace this one with your laptop. While you're at it, hit the like button if you found this video helpful. And also subscribe for more of these videos. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.